I wanna try and take in all the highs Embrace them for more than a moment's time I want you, please don't move when I push you away I know I contradict myself some days But will you ride the low, low, lows with me? Welcome to Mental Health News Radio. I am your host, Kristen Sinanta Walker. Our goal is to help discussions about mental health be a regular part of your daily life. No different than discussions about physical health. Mental illness can be a topic of discussion under the umbrella of mental health, along with so many other topics. This show is the original program on mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com. Our network of shows are played in over 180 countries and cover more topics under that umbrella than you can possibly imagine. We were talking about mental health long before it became cool and popular to talk about. And thank goodness... It has become so popular. We have incredible guests, advocates, patients, experts, you know, people. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy our intro music, a song named Lowe's, written by Aubrey Toon. You can find her music at www.aubreytoon.com. Listeners, we have Nicole Christina back with us. She is the host of the podcast, Zestful Aging, and she brought something up on the first show that we did not too long ago that had to do with eating disorders and women of a certain age. So we're going, of which I am. So we're going to. (laughs) And uh, me as well. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Nicole, thanks so much for coming back. My absolute pleasure. Now, there's so many people that I've heard, especially on our uh, the podcast on the network that is all about eating disorders, um, about people saying, oh, the COVID pounds, you know, people are putting on weight, you know, during yes. COVID and, and that, you know, people are, are struggling with um, any, whatever addiction that they've struggled with previously, you know, that um, is rearing up again during this very, very stressful time, which is completely understandable. But there's also a tie to what we're going to talk about that's outside of COVID. So I'm going to have you take it away from there. Well, let's talk about COVID for a minute. And you're absolutely right. There's there's certainly memes about COVID, uh, you know, 19 pounds. And, and it's like the freshman 15. That's what it's uh, wrapping off of. And uh, unfortunately, uh, COVID presents a, uh, I've heard it described as the perfect storm. Um, and I think we have to remember that eating disorders and other addictive behaviors are there for a good reason reason. They're a way of helping people deal with their anxiety. I mean, they really actually work really well. The problem is that they're short-lived and they cause um, some pretty uh, collateral damage, right? So it's not that they don't work. It's that they're your best effort to help yourself feel better. And I always like to tell clients this because they often feel very ashamed of using eating disorders or other addictions. And I always talk about that, like they're tools, they're not great tools, but if they're the only ones you got, you know, it feels like a whole lot better than nothing. So the problem with COVID is, you know, uh, obvious statement, it's creating anxiety, uh, off the charts for for all of us. And then we have these particular parts of it, elements that feed right into an eating disorder being um, sort of uh, the, the perfect tool, if you will, to help. And the first thing is, Now we've got a lack of structure. So whereas people used to, you know, they maybe go to nine to five or they may, you know, they have different things. They bring the kids go to school. If they have kids, if they don't, they have certain uh, sort of uh, 
what's the best way to say it? infrastructure, right? right that right. we can depend on. And we, it runs in the background, like we're computers. It kind of runs in the background. You don't usually start your day saying, wow, I'm glad I got my infrastructure going. It's helping my anxiety, right? right. I mean, it's just part of life that feels containing. If feels like I've got something that is helping um, predict uh, what's the difference between eight and nine. Well, you know, I have my breakfast at eight and I get in my car to drive to work at nine. So it sets up this nice structure for us. Now we've got the problem of a lack of social support. And that's got a couple pieces to it. First of all, everybody's worried, everybody's struggling. So the people who you may have leaned on for support may not be available. And I had this scenario, I was talking to a, a client yesterday where, you know, he's really uh, feeling very stressed and using some old behaviors and his friends are not available because they're freaking out and they're just not, right. they don't have enough bandwidth themselves to reach out. So that's causing a lot of isolation right and right go ahead please go ahead i hear you wanting to oh no actually i was oh, okay. i was switching in my seat listening oh there to... you go as long as you don't start clicking i'm Kristen, shaking i know you i know you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and then we've got the social isolation and these long stretches of time where like time has no meaning anymore right it's like right i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it next friday i'll do it next year who knows and that does not play well with people who tend to be anxious and a little bit, we'll call it like rigid, right? Like their rules, you do this, this time, that, yeah. that time, that does not work well. Having these big chunks of time where, you know, you can just sit here and no one would know that you're kind of staring at a wall or you're really in a stuck place. Um, so that, you know, so how do we deal with our, uh, boredom plus anxiety? That's a terrible combination. I don't know. We could start maybe going in the kitchen and start <laughs> eating stuff that makes us feel good, like cookies or cereal or really quick carbs, you know, that's like a little right. lanky or we could uh, do an Excel chart of how many calories we just ate, how many we plan to eat, how many fat grams. It really lends itself to um, like, how do I uh, deal with my anxiety through food, eating, body, all of this. It's sort of a perfect bad environment for this. And then what do we do while we're sitting and waiting for nothing to happen? <laughs> we go on our social media and uh. how helpful is that? So we're looking at more social media, more films of Beyonce or whomever, <laughs> or like do these crunches, drink these kale smoothies, you know, and this is the way you're going to detoxify. P.S. We have major organs for that we don't need to detoxify anything um and so like you get kind of sucked down to this vortex of um uh, of worry and how do i deal with this worry and then for folks who organize themselves around going to the gym to in their minds maybe balance out well if i'm eating this then i have to go to the gym well in most places, the gyms are closed. So it is just like, you know, we couldn't think of a more destructive environment <laughs> and the unknown, right? Like we don't really know if there's going to be a second wave. Am I ever going to be able to travel again? Am I, what does it mean if I want to um, visit family? I don't know. What are we doing for Thanksgiving? We don't know. Are there going to, you know, we just, there's so many things that keep us stable that are completely upended right now. And eating disorders are a very elegant, albeit destructive way to help us feel better. Wow. I know just listening to all of that made me think I really would like some cake. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so this is my guess is like,
like your anxiety was like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. What would help? There is nothing that helps you feel better than if you're a chocolate fan, like a chocolate layer cake. It's like the nicest, sweetest yeah. blanky and a little binky too. I mean, it's the cuddliest, coziest feeling because you know, of all the stuff that's going on with brain chemistry. And, you know, if you were my client, I'd say when you feel like having a big piece of cake, what are the feelings behind that? What are you really needing? Right. And, you know, I want to say that the National Association of Eating Disorders is looking at a 78% increase in calls and chats to their organization. People are suffering. Yeah. And um, I'm really worried about people, you know, both who are my clients and who I know are out there just so alone with this. Yes, because, you know, you, uh, my son was saying this the other day. I asked him, you know, how are you doing? I haven't heard from you in a couple weeks. And I know he calls his father every day, but his father, has a lot of health issues, but um, he, you know, he always says, well, you don't really need me to call you every day. Right. And I, and I tell him, no, that would be actually annoying, but it had been a couple of weeks. And he said, you know, mom, it's like every day is the worst day of your life in terms of all of the bad news that we keep getting and politics and COVID and, you know, all this stuff. He goes, so every day is the worst day of your life and it's groundhog day. (laughs) That's a great way to say it. That is a great way to say it. And like, we never really know when we're going to get to the day that's not Groundhog Day. And some people flow better with uncertainty than others. And if you're kind of organized in a way um, that, you know, you like things kind of in, in, in good and bad or right and wrong categories, clear categories, you are really in trouble right now because the things that we didn't even think about that hold us steady and are kind of keeping our mental health glued together, they are, they're not there anymore. And I have my, you know, my students that I see and they are just desperate and, Mm. you know, and I don't even, and they're, you know, it's all telehealth now. Right. They're, just struggling. And um, I I worry about our world's mental health. And then as Americans, we've got a whole other layer of (laughs) new fresh hell every day. Yes, we do. I I find that some people, you know, that have, um, actually, there's no rhyme or reason, I was going to say that have been through a lot of trauma, but also a lot of therapy or faring okay during this time, but it, it is kind of just where you're at um, with your life. Um, I think people who are who have done a lot of work are on themselves and are a bit more self-aware are getting through it and maybe also who have experienced a lot of trauma. Well, they know they can get through traumatic experiences because because they've been through it. And p- people that have not ever, you know, gone on that journey of self-discovery, um, or, or they've not done it at least to the degree that a trauma survivor has, I guess, um, that they're, this is the first time that they're really dealing with something awful and it's just impacting them in a way that they cannot understand. That's, I think that's really important. And one of my jobs as a therapist, and hopefully it comes through in my podcast interviews as well, is like right now we're about lowering expectations. And what you're going to find is that in one moment you're super motivated, you're cleaning your mm-hmm. basement or your closets like a, a fiend. And the next moment you can barely get off the couch to make yourself some supper. So right. it's like, wait a minute, what, what do I, what are these ranges? are so bizarre and people are saying to me like what's wrong with me and that's covid i mean the lack of motivation is we know that that is about covid you know it's interesting too um some of the fallbacks like i a fallback for me has been um you know anxiety just going off and on you know rabbit trails in in my brain and all the exercises that i've done about that's something that doesn't need to happen or all the things that I've been trained in therapy and so on to do are really pushed, 
you know, to that limit. And I notice with other people as well. Um, so once we get the feeding frenzy of anxiety going, then you've got minor things that happen. You know, um, let's say I had someone get very upset with me because I couldn't keep going on walks with them because as we talked about last time, I have plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. And all, and I kept trying to say, this is really painful. Um, I'm going to need to, you know, maybe think about not doing this for a little bit. And I have my own stress about that, you know, oh no, what am I going to do? That's where I'm getting all my exercise. I'm going to have to switch, you know, everybody. Oh, you know. Yeah. And the email that I got back at the, you know, an encyclopedia of all this stuff about me not liking them anymore. It just this Thing just turned into this huge thing. And I thought that is a sign of, yep. you know, it, yes, it's a, it's a reflection of that person and what they don't deal with, <laughs> but it's also, you know, magnified because it's this time, everybody is feeling like that to some degree and people are acting out in different ways and ways that really surprise them. I think that's absolutely right. We're terrified. We are absolutely terrified. And there's a term in, psychotherapy, you know, fear of annihilation. This isn't like, oh, I hope I get a good haircut tomorrow. Sometimes right. she cuts it too short. That's not what this is. This is holy shit. I mean, what's my world going to look like in that my, some of my clients are just grieving for the state of the world and, and the wildfires in, in the West, you know, like, mm. what does that mean? That's just not like, oh, that's a bummer. I mean, that signals so much um, more important, you know, that's like the canary in the coal mine, right? Like, yeah. This is really bad and, and you better not ignore it because nature always bats last. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we're sitting here in our little, you know, homes or apartments or whatever thinking, what am I going to do about that? I mean, this is existential stuff. We don't know, you know, when 200,000 people are dying and people aren't wearing masks. I mean, you know, we just, our brains are not made to metabolize and understand that level of, of stress. Of, no, yeah. no, we're not. Yeah. Agreed. Not made that way. So it's really challenging. And I think you're right. Like some people are really acting weirdly and they don't even know why themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, exactly. And how long, how long there, that's the other thing too, is that limbo land. No one really likes to live in limbo land. No. So that, that feeling of, we don't, okay, well, maybe when we, you know, get through the election, well, then there's all kinds of, oh, yeah. if one wins, oh, great. We get four more years of that. If the other one yeah, wins, what kind survive. of, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. We cannot survive it. And, and so, so this is why, and what you're saying is exactly, you know, what I'm trying to, to help people understand. So what can you control? I can control the serving size of rice I eat. Right. I can control the level, the number of fat grams. And I've got a Fitbit who not only, you know, tells me my heart rate or how long I'm sleeping, but it will tell me exactly how many steps. By the way, 10,000 steps is a complete market. Uh, that was a marketing job. The people in Japan who way back mm. uh, developed this thought it was sort of catchy. No basis in, in, in uh, science, really for women. We top out at about 7,200 steps in terms of benefit. For our system. Wow. So people get really wrapped up and I don't did, I didn't do my 10,000 steps. I need to do my 10,000 steps. That's fabricated. And what you need to do is move your body in ways that feel really restorative and, you know, sort of stimulating, but not in a way that sort of externally says you have to do this to, right. to do that. It's about getting, you know, pumping some good oxygen in your body, getting some blood flow, getting those synovial, fl synovial fluids moving. It's about moving your body. It's not about hitting 10,000 steps. And um, so I just, I kind of want to put a little, you know, thank you for you that know, sort of help in there for people. Don't get crazy about 10,000. Really what you want to do is move in a way that feels good, that your body's saying this feels 
you know, this is great. It feels lovely to be outside, get some sun. If you live in Syracuse, do the best you can. <laughs> you don't have a lot of sun, but you know, really, you really, we really just want to move, walk your dog, whatever. It's not about um, steps. It's about your body moving. Mm. Well, let's talk about, which is fascinating to me, um, the record numbers of women over the age of, is that 45? Mm -hmm. Yep. And this was pre-COVID too, correct? Correct. This is pre-COVID. Yeah. And these are women um, about the age of 45 that are coming in for residential treatment for eating disorders. And I think that that really... It doesn't shock me because I've had an eating disorder since I was in my single digits mm -hmm. <laughs> age. So, but I think it would shock a lot of other people to hear that, that even pre COVID that that's going on. So can you talk a bit about that? Sure. Yeah. It has nothing to do with COVID. It has everything to do with what we're noticing, um, mostly women. I mean, there's certainly people who, you know, men also have eating disorders, so I don't want to, but what we know is that it mostly affects women. Also, they are the ones who come in for treatment. What we find again, this has nothing to do with COVID made worse by COVID. I'm right. Sure, but this existed before is that you have a woman 45 and, and, and let's say older sort of could be premenopausal, could be in menopause, postmenopause, and everything is changing and shifting and frankly feeling like a lot of loss. And so we have kids launching, even if they come back, it's still that they're growing up, they're launching. There may or may not be some marital or partner kind of reevaluation. And there's a term gray divorce now because there's so many folks in this um, age period who are getting divorced much of the time is being initiated by the woman because she's saying, look, we, you know, we raised our kids. I can support myself and I want to go trekking somewhere and you want to sit and watch the history channel. <laughs> there's not that much in it for me, you know? Right. Uh, so there's sort of like a, a, a reassessment of that. There's a, there's a, um, the body really changing now, particularly, you know, menopausal women. If you have a daughter, nature is particularly unkind because you're seeing her thrive into this glowing sort of sexual being, uh, sort of ripening and with her body as a, a the body of a maybe a 20 year old uh, 25 year old whatever as you are starting to sag and dimple and you know and all of a sudden you know I looked at my legs the other day I was sitting cross like that what is going on here there was like this creping that like I had not observed before I was like in the sunlight I thought that doesn't even look like skin anymore. You know, what happens? So that's <laughs> happening at the exact same time. You're, if you have a daughter, they're, you know, blooming into, you know, their prime. So that's particularly cool. And then there's the question of, I have a lot of teachers in my practice and many of them retire at 50 and they're like, hmm, okay, things are going to be changing. Uh, now what? So there's a lot of like, now what? And so what can often happen in this experience of really losing one's identity is, oh, well, I'm going to get really healthy. And you probably know, Kristen, because you talk to so many people that the number of people signing up for marathons are like, you know, sorry, right. there's no room left for marathon. You, you know, we got to, you got to try again next time because we're full. Right. Well, a lot of middle-aged women are saying, I'm going to get really healthy and embrace fitness, which is wonderful unless it becomes rigid and you can't eat birthday cake because it has sugar in it, or you can't skip a workout to go to a friend's whatever 
party because that would freak you out too much. And of course, we know how good it feels for people to say, have you lost weight? You look wonderful. I yeah. mean, who does not want to hear that? Let's be honest. And so it adds sort of fuel on the fire. Oh, if you think this looks good, I'm going to do even more crunches. And then we get to the point where the sort of health and fitness is starting to boss you around and your life is just about focusing on when can I get the gym? How many miles have I run? Um, I skipped a workout, you, you know, oh my goodness, my anxiety. Oh, now I can't have a glass of wine at dinner because I didn't, it, it rained, so I couldn't get my work. Your whole life gets organized around your so-called healthy lifestyle. Which, right becomes not so healthy. And then you do that enough and then we get, you know, some serious physical health problems. And then we get a situation where it's just unsustainable. And then, um, you know, and then you need a higher level of care. Outpatient will not, you know, can only go so far. Mm. And it is very difficult to get insurance coverage for inpatient care um from what i understand oh boy you're you're i i that's a soapbox that you know makes me crazy and there's been lawsuits in different states um against insurance companies when um i know of one one um where parents were trying to get their their daughter into uh, a residential treatment uh, facility and the insurance denied and the, the, the child died. Well, she wasn't a child. She was a college student. And so there was a huge lawsuit that Blue Cross Blue Shield lost. So now there's a law. I mean, yes, you're absolutely right. And what makes me so upset is like, you're already dealing with someone who's so vulnerable and mm. so in need. And then to add on, oh, your insurance may not cover this. And the out-of-pocket expense, are you ready for this? <laughs> Last I looked, and it's been a while, is between $1,500 and $2,000 a day. A yeah. Day. Yeah. So it's not like, well, if insurance doesn't cover, I'll just, you know, I'll just, no. That's yeah. not a normal person's budget. It's also, yeah, I, I, I had read thirty to $40,000 a month. So yeah, it's, oh, well, I want to talk more about this. Um, so would you come back on again and we'll get into more of how we can, this, what we can do to help each other through this? Yes, and I would like, if it's okay, to leave of course. the National Eating Disorder Association hotline. It's 800-931-2237. Two two three seven, um, and they have. Uh, it's a hotline, and I would really recommend if you're struggling with eating disorders and you're starting to feel like you're you're losing that struggle, and um, and and understandably so these days. Um, I would really recommend you call. Um, it's it's right now. It's the second highest mortality rate of any psych diagnosis mm. after opioid overdose. So it's nothing to be played with, and uh, so. I would hope that you would use that resource. Absolutely. And listeners, you can always go to whatever your favorite um, podcast app is and look for Zestful Aging. Uh, wonderful, wonderful show. It's been on for a while and just um, added to our Mental Health News Radio Yay. Network lineup. Yay. So <laughs> very excited about it. We don't have a show on the network that's like this. Um, so I'm I'm so happy that that it's here and nicole will come on again and talk more about this so thank you so much oh thank you Kristen. i really appreciate you getting the word out it's really important and i you know as you can tell i have great passion for it yes and i love that <laughs> listeners thank you for tuning in to another episode of mental health news radio hi listeners i'll make it quick these are some really cool places that give discounts and other cool things for listeners of Mental Health News Radio Network. If you want to get amazing help with healing from narcissistic abuse, go to healfromanarcissist.com. If you want CBD products that are the best of the best, I use them myself, go to pros, P R O Z E.com and use the code MENTALHEALTH20, MENTALHEALTH20. If you want to get daily, 
daily perk ups that help retrain your brain to think more positively, go to perkupdaily.com. And also, just because this one's fun, snarkycandles.com. I guarantee you'll love them. Snarky with a Y, S N A R K Y, candles.com. And don't forget, if you want to hear all the shows on the network about first responders, you can go to firstrespondermentalhealthnetwork.com. And all of our shows that focus on narcissistic abuse, narcissisticabusehealingnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and back to the show. Will you ride the low, low, lows with me? Will you ride the low, low, lows with me? One thing you can always count on at Mental Health News Radio Network and my show is that there will always be dogs around. Why? They are natural healers, excellent for your mental health. The original therapy dog, Miles, has something to say in just a moment. For now, please check out all of our amazing shows at mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com and all your favorite podcast apps. Until next time, I'm Kristen Sinanta Walker, and thank you for listening. Me tonight, and I can write the low, low lows with me. I can write the low.